We're going to jump into this guy right here, Philip DeFranco. Oh. We're going to talk about Philip DeFranco. Okay. <laughs> um, I used to be a big fan of Philip DeFranco. He was his own guy. He uh, started on YouTube a long time ago, one of the OGs. And he built up this uh, this news company. He had source fed. And I was, always, I was always like, man, this guy, he works hard. He was calm, rational, reasonable. He interviewed Gary Johnson. He brought alternate alternative voices to the political debate. And I was like, this is cool. It is cool to see that through YouTube, we can we can hear more from people like, you know, the Liber Libertarian Party. Uh, gr granted, the Libertarian Party, you know, <laughs> little Jack Sparrowy. But uh, today, I just see these tweets from him, and it's like, he's just become so mean. He was just, always kind of snarky like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's one thing, I, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe I'm just wrong, but uh, I've met him a couple times. I've talked with him, and he always seemed to be willing to listen and kind of more reasonable. Yeah. Like when the media ecosystem was was on TV yelling and, 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 and things like that, he always presented the news in a way that was more so like, well, let, let's take a look at what they're saying and why. Like, let's be reasonable. Here's what he has now. Philip DeFranco tweeted, imagine having the, cre the eligibility and access to get the vaccine and saying, nah. Also to the pearl clutchers offended by this tweet. Yes, I am calling you stupid. And you can go F yourself, you ignorant, selfish F face. He then posted again. F man, damn it, this isn't me. I missed the mark. I would really like to apologize if you'll give me the time to read this. I saw that tweet when he said that, and I was like, that's cool, man. That's like Phil. And then I read what he actually posted. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Ha ha ha. F you again. And the people saying, oh, wow, name calling is really going to convince me. I'm done trying to convince you. That's over. I'm just going to mock you for believing a bunch of F-face grifters monetizing misinformation and or ignorance, ignorance over scientists using the most recent and relevant info. So look, I'm not going to cry about it. It's like whatever. I don't know. You know, he does his thing. That's fine. But I saw that and I'm like, what happened to us? What? what, what, what? He wasn't always like that. No, he, no, no. He was sexy Phil, dude. If you he know was, Phil in the early days, his video channel was so sexy Phil. Straight edge. S-X-E <laughs> Which Phil. is straight edge Phil. Yeah, pure <laughs> Phil being sexy in his bedroom, all black and white, <laughs> chilling. Mystery Guitar Man writes his killer theme song. It's Phil. He's what? a normal dude. But but even, even six years ago, like what? the last time I saw him at VidCon or whatever, and he was like, hey, you know, he's really nice, really calm, really chill. Now he's on Twitter just it, calling people F face and insulting them. I, I was thinking this about Sarah Silverman too. It seems like, and I don't know if it's in, in indicative of celebrities only, but it seems like people that are kind of tertiary or on the outskirts watching what's happening have like a snapping mental break moment. And then it comes out in some dumb Twitter post. Remember Sarah Silverman was yeah, like, but, but look, just look. get over it, people. Like she yeah, just yeah, had yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And this yep. is Phil just having it. Yes, but he's also, he, she he also was on the things. wrong side of the Covington kids thing. Hmm, it's yeah. not, it's, it's, it's been a gradual thing where- Oh, Phil? Yeah, the dudes like, look, man, I'm not I'm, I'm not going to cry that he's calling people these these things. I'm asking. I'm just asking, like, why is that happening? Probably because he people, doesn't have anyone around telling him he's an idiot. <laughs> I mean, his wife's pretty cool. But you look at what happens She's when really these cool, things actually. happen, right? Now, there'll be some drama. They'll be like, oh, you know, Tim Pool said X or whatever. All I'm saying is, why do you got to be so mean to people all the time? Why is everyone constantly trying to be mean? I don't want to be mean to Phil. I was I'm, I'm I was, I was a big fan until I started seeing him tweet stuff like this. And I'm just like, I don't like people being just mean directly to other people. He's He's got kids. I think he has two kids yeah, now. He's so he's maybe he's being like overly protective of it and bought into the, the hype. The media and I, hype. I, I also want to say this too. That's still not an excuse to be like a total no. dick though. Also, but, but I also did say, what happened to us? I'm not absolving myself yeah. from any of the responsibility for the things I've, I've said, said either. I've said horrible hmm. stuff to people in the last 20 years. And I'm just years. wondering like, man, can we just kind of... Look, I'm not going to be unfair to myself. I genuinely try to avoid directly insulting and name calling. I do a very good job. But sometimes I'll mock people and I'll like, you know, I'll do like, you know, really snide impersonations of them. But I genu I generally try to avoid things like this that are just really nasty, really low, really angry and mean. No forgiveness. That's like the key thing here. Like what happened to being like, yo, let's work this out. Let's be nice to each other. But one thing that is going on too, and we can go back to the, I mean, discussing this vaccine passport situation is that is bullying, right? Saying to people, you can't go to work, you can't work out, you can't eat out, you can't participate in life unless you do this thing that I'm demanding that you do, whatever it is. Whatever it is, that's a me, bullying thing to do. That's a mean bully thing to do. And so I understand. From the same people who are constantly saying like, oh, don't bully. We have to have special sessions in all of our schools. And so here, here's, what, here's, not to be bullies. here's what I want to point out when he says, I'm going to mock you for believing a bunch of F face grifters monetizing misinformation and or ignorance over scientists using the most recent and relevant info. 
You know what the you know what the the, the, the nail in the coffin for me this one uh, for for me on this one is one of the biggest issues from UPMC University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon University researchers and researchers identify groups hesitant about COVID nineteen vaccine and they say hesitancy held constant in the most educated group those with a PhD by May PhDs were um, were the most hesitant group while vaccine hesitancy decreased across virtually all racial groups. They say blacks and Pacific Islanders had the largest decrease. They mentioned that those with high school educations or less were the most likely to reduce their vaccine hesitancy. So here's my, my o- overall point about what, what Phil is doing. Not only is he being really, really mean to people, but he's, oh, he is also very, very wrong about what he's talking about. The people who are being misled or, you know, whatever, are not more like... First of all, why would you be mean to somebody who is confused by by lies? Right. Mm-hmm. Like if people, when people believe bad things, I don't say you're a stupid moron. I say that's not true. Let me show you the proof. Mm-hmm. So why come out and insult them? And it turns out, of all the people he's criticizing, he's criticizing people with PhDs. Now I can't tell you why people with PhDs are the most hesitant. I have no idea. So the point is, are we going to pretend like people with PhDs are stupid? Okay. Well, isn't that the science and academia? We have a re- we have a very serious conundrum of perspectives here. This is a, this is a, this is this is science. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to trust science, right? Mm. Okay. Well, Carnegie Mellon University and University of Pittsburgh are saying PhDs are the most hesitant group. They're also academics, and I want to know why they feel that way. I'm not going to scream at them, insult them, and deride them. And I'm also I'm I'm, I'm not trying to be mad at, at Phil either. I'm just hoping people kind of chill out, and we can have real conversations again. You know what we did with Charlie Kirk and Vosh? I thought was incredible. And there's a photo of all of us where all just standing together and everything. <laughs> and I'm like, look at that man. You know, they, they, they come here, they meet, they laugh, they made points. They don't agree with each other at all. Mm-hmm. But at least we can have something where we can sit down and be cordial. Twitter is a nightmare. We should we should just, you know what? I'm for one regulation right now. Ban Twitter. Just go mm-hmm. and get it's rid of text, it. text. Communicating in text. That's where all this this dumb mis- miscommunication is, seems mm-hmm. to be stemming but from. But where's the anger coming from, dude? From like, like the Twitter lack of emotional <laughs> interaction. Like when it's all text, when right. I etch something on a wall and then you walk in and look at the wall, we're not having that emotional connection. And so I can you know, see where the anger, why I, it build. I write like, tweets all the time. Dumb thing. Mm-hmm. I'll write a tweet and then I'll delete it. You yeah, I did that today. <laughs> I do it like seven times a day. I'm like, here's how I feel and I don't need to share that. Yeah, you I got do it that out. too. I kind of should have done that the other day. <laughs> <laughs> why? What did you tweet? I tweeted about how New York City's vaccine passports are a total disaster oh. and I'm definitely going to leave New York. I, can, you know I still you know have not. I'm still, people are like, oh, let me have your apartment. And I'm like, Girl, the joke's on you. You don't. Yeah, want that, was, uh, that was that uh, was Dana Schwartz. <laughs> it was a couple journalist. of people. So there was. Um, but no, it doesn't get good light, and it's you, not in a neighborhood you want to live. What in. What neighborhood? You, so, well, so you. I'm you, not going to say where I live. You posted a tweet <laughs> saying the vaccine yeah. passports were wrong, mm-hmm. and then it actually made it to the front page of Reddit r slash all. Oh, the funniest it? thing about it was the comments were all calling you an anti vaxxer Right. <laughs> and it's like you, you're you're vaccinated. Yeah, I'm right? vaccinated. We, and but see, that's the thing. Yeah. This is the tribalism. The point Where? is that, that the point is that that's my choice. Nobody should have to show their medical status in order to move freely and about their society. ID? It's insanity. And their ID. And their ID. Show your Nothing. papers. Nothing. We always. I, 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 we should have a right to live anonymously in our cities, for God's sake. Well, it's not, it's not only that. It's that how, how, how many times have we heard showing your papers was the wrong thing, that we should never that have the authority a, demanding yeah. papers from people going about their business. But you have to watch saying anything about that, too. I mean, you have Marjorie Taylor Greene comparing, you know, vaccine passports and mandates and things like that to uh, Third Reich huh. things, and she gets totally slammed for it. So, I mean, you can't. There's also this, there's also this thing where you can't make comparisons to historical realities. This is whether it's, the right, perfect or, whether example, it's right or wrong. This is know, the perfect example of tribalism. The fact that when they see your post saying like we shouldn't mandate this stuff, the response is anti-vaxxers are so dumb, even mm-hmm. though you are vaccinated. Right. It shows that they don't care about reality. It's the other. You know what I just watched the other mm-hmm. day? Have you guys seen Electric Dreams? No. It's on uh, Amazon. It's a Philip K. Dick short, oh, yeah. shorts mm-hmm. or whatever. Do, uh, Dude, you guys got to watch the 10th, the, the final episode. I think it's episode 10. It might be episode 8. I don't know. It is about this guy, and it's like in the near it's like in the near future, I guess. And there's one candidate left in the race, and so you vote to affirm the, the president. And then this, this so this, she's a female candidate, and she's being interviewed, and she abruptly says, "Kill all others," oh, and yikes. then changes the subject to education real quickly. And then the interviewer is like, "I can't believe you would say something like like that about education." And then this guy's like, "Wait, what?" 
she just said, kill all others. Why isn't anybody talking about this? And he gets his wife and she's like, what are you talking about? I don't care. He goes to work and he's telling all his friends. And they're like, man, who cares about politics? Right. Then a few days later, there's a billboard that says kill all others. And there's a, a, a person hanging from a noose. And then they're like, oh, it's just politics, man. It's a, it's a gimmick. It's a dummy. And so this guy keeps coming out and saying, like, why are you doing this? Why are you advocating for this? And the people go, what are you? An other? Why are you defending them? He's an other. And that's how you identify yourself. It was a brilliant episode. And the gist of it is basically the authority makes a declaration. Mm -hmm. If you oppose them, you are the person they're talking You're about. You're the problem. Yeah. And that's what's happening now. If the government says, we're going to do something abusive and authoritarian, and you say, mm -hmm. I don't think you should do that, they say, then you're the Nazi, you're the you're fascist, the you're the anti-vaxxer. You're the problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, it's risky when you're dealing with totalitarian regimes, because if you come out against them, you'll get murdered. But if you create an, an alternate path, that often can work. It is, it is extremely creepy to me what's happening with everything about how you, you quite literally have people who last year were, were vaccine, uh, were anti-vaxxers, and we all called them anti-vaxxers. Right. It's hilarious. Right. Now, like those people who wouldn't get their kids vaccinated for, against like the measles. And so we had like a measles outbreak in California. I, I'm, like I'm, 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 I'm talking about last year when they were, all of these blue checks were ragging on FDA and the CDC oh, and, and, you and mean, the big pharma. <laughs> you mean like when Kamala Harris was like, I wouldn't Trump, trust a Trump yes. vaccine. <laughs> and Cuomo. Mm -hmm. And then all these crazy? other personalities. Can I tell you something? So we wrote about that, uh, the Kamala Harris vaccine thing. Um, we wrote like a little, we wrote about it at the time, Kamala Harris as opposed to the Trump vaccine, you know, or whatever it was, some headline. And then recently we wrote about it again. We were like, let's just remind people that she said she wouldn't trust a vaccine, you know, from the, we were fact checked for that. And it was like, she, this is what she said. The, the article was, this is the thing she said. Right. Do you guys remember this is the thing she said? That's all it was. It was like. It was who, like who a, it was it. like a, a blip. It was like two hundred words. It was nothing. It was like a, um, I think it was, was it, fa science feedback? Maybe it might have been science feedback. Did you? But also the thing. Do you remember in the spring, Doctor Senator uh, Rand Paul was talking to Fauci, and they did like two segments. There was like a March segment, and then a little later, and similar questions. So we wrote a story about like. This is what he said in March. This is this was their conversation in March. This was their conversation in May. We got fact checked for that for for not enough context. We literally wrote down the things the senator said to the doctor. We wrote those things down. Did you see that Facebook? That was missing context. It was literally the conversation. Facebook labeled opinion. the CDC fake news. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there was a CDC article saying that they were recommending a change in the PCR test to like a better test, and uh -huh. then because of a fact checker. Label, like, I, I guess what people were saying was like, aha, this means the test didn't work. And then mm -hmm. the fact checker, was, fa fact checker responded to that link saying, that's not true. It did work. It's just a change in methodology. But it automatically applied the fake news tag to all of the posts, all that, of, to that, to that post from the CDC. That is amazing. Because yep. social media knows better. They know what the narrative is. And anything that diverts from the narrative is false. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.